Howdy, and welcome to the Where to Hunt podcast, the podcast that connects public land hunting enthusiasts. Today is August 9th, 2017, and I'm your host, Eric Clark. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Where to Hunt podcast, dusting things off here and uh, trying to get back to consistency. And to do that, I brought on a guest today from the Working Class Bowhunter podcast, Kurt Geyer. I had the opportunity, um, the great opportunity, to guest on the Working Class Bowhunter podcast to talk about the Where to Hunt app. Uh, I believe it was... Uh, sometime after winter, maybe it was uh, December, January, or February, one of those months. And uh, those guys on that show are a great, great group of guys. So I was really happy that Kurt um, agreed to be on the show today. And I'm really excited because it really lightens things up on mine. It's not as uh, informative and tip and tactic kind of style. It's more just two guys talking about hunting and, and uh, traditional hunting and hunting and tradition. A lot of tradition in hunting. Um so that's what we're talking about on today's episode and just kind of keeping it light. Kurt's a great guy. So I want to say thanks again to him when he listened to it for being on the show. And uh, thanks to all the working class bull hunter guys. Uh, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and bring Kurt on right now. All right. We're going to welcome our guest of the week. Today we have Kurt Geyer on the show with us. Kurt is with the working class bow hunter, just a little podcast you probably have heard of. And uh, Kurt and I are going <laughs> to share some, some beers over the mic here. How you doing, Kurt? I'm not bad. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Hell yeah. Thanks it's for weird that I'm on this end of the podcast game. <laughs> That's awesome. Totally kind of it, flip roles here. It's fun, man. I know. Like I Now I know when people come on my show, they're like, man, I'm sort of nervous. I'm like, ah, it's all good. And then I'm on the other end. I'm like, oh, shit. I kind of am nervous. I don't know why. I don't know how many podcasts I've recorded, but it's just kind of something. Maybe I'm not drunk enough. I don't know. That's probably it. You got to you gotta cash. I think you got to get to like 19. And then you feel good. <laughs> That's right. We <laughs> tend to put away the bush lattes on the podcast on the old working class bow hunter. So let's uh, tell me about yourself. Um, one thing I ask everybody that's on my show is how long have you been hunting and do you hunt private or public land or both? All right. Well, I'm Kurt Geyer from working class bow hunter, uh, Northwest Illinois. Well, kind of like Northwest central quad cities, Illinois area, uh, right on the Mississippi. Um, so we had to be friends with the Iowan. So Eric Hammond, he does our podcast with the uh, working glass boner. He's from Iowa, but, uh, been hunting since I was about 12 years old. Um, I gun hunted for a few years and actually didn't kill anything. And then like my first day bow hunting, I killed a deer. So I just was meant to be a bow hunter, I guess is the way it worked out for me. Um, I tend to hunt private ground usually, um, almost exclusively because, in Illinois, in my area, there's not a lot of offering for public ground. Sure. There's some in the area, but it's, um, it's a little bit of ways away from me and I have more, I have easier access to smaller tracts of private than I do, uh, public, but don't get me wrong. If there was a public nearby, I think I would I'd try and get after it probably a little bit more there to probably try and prove a point than, <laughs> than, you know, everyone, everyone always says it's, Oh yeah, you killed, you killed deer cause you hunt private ground, but it's, well, it's 20 I mean, acres here. Deer don't know they're on 30 ground, acres there. You know, and you got to still be careful well, burning your stand and burning your spot. And, you know, yep. it's not it's not th- that great. Don't get me wrong. It, it can be, but there's a lot more that goes it into be. it, too. So it's it's a horse apiece in some yep. regard. Yeah, it absolutely can be awesome, you know. And we all know that guy. That hunts incredibly awesome private ground. Um, and it almost seems like that guy doesn't know anything about hunting, but always kills like a 150 every year. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. know. I know that guy. I think everyone might know that guy, but uh, I don't know, man. It's just what it is. It's everyone thinks Illinois got or the Midwest, Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa has big deer around every corner, and and they're out here, but that's that's just not the case all, all the time, you know. So makes sense. I don't know. I've never hunted Illinois, and honestly enough, I know one guy that goes from Wisconsin to Illinois, but he has private land. He actually, I think it's lease land. So I, I usually oh, okay. hear the other direction people coming up instead of going down, but he's had a lot of success down there. So I'm like, oh, that's you awesome. You know, I, I was going to hunt Wisconsin um, because I know it's cheaper. It's expensive to hunt in Illinois as a non-resident, but the thing is you can kill a buck every year. Um, yeah, sounds, and I think Wisconsin might be the same way for a non-resident. It depends on where you go. We ought to get together and do some hunting or target practice or drinking or something since you're not so for far sure. away. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, a few hours probably. Um, but, uh, 
yeah, man, if there's more public ground, I'd be, you know, I'd be all, all in it. Um, I'm actually in Idaho right now for work. And, uh, I got hooked up with a guy who couldn't find out, like we had a mutual friend and, uh, they hooked us up. I met this guy, his name's Steve Alderman. And I didn't know he's basically a mule deer legend out here. They call him Mr. Mule Deer. And he's got, I don't know how many 200 inch public land muleys in his house. I, I could not even believe it, man. It was incredible. Wow. So a lot of public out West, not a lot in the Midwest. So. Yeah, and the stuff that is public here in Wisconsin, it's it gets pretty crowded, but it is what it is. So tell me about and and not me, but everybody listening. Once this is published, um, tell tell us all about the working class bow hunter. Where did it, how did the idea how did the idea start? When did you guys get started? Give me the whole the whole spiel. Well, working class bow hunter is. I'll just kind of tell you about what we are and then how we got started. I guess, like you said, uh, we're it's it's three guys that do it. Myself. Um, Stevie Mo or Steven Muller. He's, uh, one of our hosts on the show. He's kind of like the crazy guy. Um, he drops a wrestling reference, like every podcast, which some people love and some people <laughs> just like face palm every time, but he, he keeps the podcast light. All right. And, uh, Eric is Eric Hammond. He's from Eldridge, Iowa. He's the, the quiet, he doesn't speak a lot, but he, he's, he, it's a good dynamic between Steve always talking me telling Steve to shut up and then Eric just hit hitting them with one liners here and there. And we kind of take that dynamic between the differences of all of us and blend them around our podcast studio, which we call the bucketorium. And we drink beer, shoot the shit. We cuss, we talk, we joke around, which I think is, is a very important. It's just like hunting camp. You know, then we talk, we talk hunting business and we got to develop a game plan. We talk tips and tactics and, uh, we have guests on our show, like a lot of podcasts, but um, we our goal is to kind of bring out, if we have a guest on the show, bring out a different uh, type of interview or a different feel in that interview for our listeners to kind of maybe get like a closer personal connection to where if someone's on our show, they can be like, oh yeah, that guy's either as cool as I thought he was or way cooler than we thought he was. You know what I mean? So Yeah, and you guys um, successfully do that every time. I... uh Man, I got I had the opportunity, as you know, to, to guest on your show, and I loved it. I I felt like I was at Deer Camp. It was so cool because it's not like it's not the formal. Like we're, I mean, I would say what we're doing is a little bit more formal. It's a back and forth. I'm asking questions, you're answering them. You guys, because there's more of you and you have that good dynamic going on, it's a totally different yep. atmosphere, and it really comes through. And it's, that's why it's so much fun to listen to. Yeah, well, I appreciate that, man. That, I mean, we're just here to have a good time. We don't take ourselves too seriously, man, and it's just, we're here to have fun. And, um, you know, once it's, if it ever quits not being fun at all, and I'll just tell Steve to get the fuck out of my house and win the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so it's at your house. You know, the bucketorium is at your house. <laughs> yeah. I built, I took whole one whole room of my house and made it into a little studio and it's a small little thing, but we built, uh, me and Eric and Steve built a cool table and we got all over the wall. We just have different memorabilia from hunting and signatures and posters people have signed to the working class bow hunter and um eric just got a really cool sign that's like huge stainless cut with changing neon lights on it of our logo and that'll be up but uh Dude, you know man we're just in it to have cool. fun you know if anyone sees us at any like convention like the iowa classic or ata we're there to have a great time we're not there to it's not a swing a dick competition for us man we're, we're there to have a good time yeah and you guys definitely do i mean it's if you have, if you if you're listening, you haven't heard the Working Class Bull Hunter podcast. You're listening to my podcast. You might want to just stop listening to this one right now and go check them out. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, workingclassbowhunter dot com, uh, Facebook Working Class Bull Hunter podcast on Instagram, and we even have a Snapchat, which isn't you know it's Snapchat. It's but, hard uh, to figure that one but, out because it's always someone's pr- whatever. We don't have to get into that, but that's an interesting one. Right. But, how how we started though? I guess I didn't answer that question. Is uh, I've always been into podcasts. Um, I guess podcasting's blown up in the last six months. You know, there's so many hunting podcasts, especially starting now. But um, back in the day, it was like Joe Rogan and just some random podcasts. And I always was into quite a few of those. And I got on, I'm like, well, I'll search some hunting podcasts and see what's going on out here. And I found a few, um, you know, back then. This was three years ago or so. And I uh, didn't find anything that I personally could get into yeah um so i'm like oh i want to make my own 
And uh, Steve actually had a comedy podcast That's at perfect. the time. No wonder he's so funny. And yeah, he had a he had a comedy podcast called him and like four other guys. They were absolutely hilarious. Uh, called the Good Sirs Podcast. And he uh, I didn't even know Steve. He just saw me put something online about podcasting, and he's like, "Hey man, I'm getting into hunting, and I do a podcast. You want to come over and check it out?" And they had like this really cool studio, like hidden like the bookshelf you know where you pull the book and slide the bookshelf over and then the studio is like hidden behind it and uh i did one podcast with them and i'm like and none of these guys were hunters except for steve like the rest of these guys are like city boys yeah so they're like why the hell is this guy they're tacky they're all into it and they were funny man though but and then after that steve's like dude you want to do a podcast i'll I'll co-host it with you and he heckled me for probably six months every day Wow. And uh, <laughs> I was filming for like a hunting video project at the time. And I eventually, like I dropped that and me and Steve just dove head first in the podcast game and grabbed Eric along. And that's basically it. It turns into more work every day, which I love it though. It's a ton of work. That's why I lack really my is, consistency. Man. It's it's rough. I have, I do another one um, with a buddy and that one stays pretty consistent because he does most of the work. All I got to do is show up and talk and drink <laughs> a beer. So of course that one gets more like consistency but this one i like doing i don't want to say more in case he listens but i i like this one more because <laughs> it's it's my jam it's your own show yep I get yeah it's your jam shots. but it's tough man like to be consistent that's the key to do one a week and that's the thing with our show um you'll always get one episode a week yeah, um fact if you got three guys coming together and, and one under one roof and physically getting together i don't know if that's like a level yeah. of accountability that that i don't have when i'm doing it on my own but that sounds tricky to manage three different dudes' schedules, especially when they're all in the hunting. Well, man, we you know we own the name Working Class Bowhunter. We've literally turned it into a business, and it, we take it very seriously. I mean, I joke around about it, but it is like we do take it really seriously. We care about what we do. Like we really care about what we what we're doing, and really at the end of the day, podcast or not, I think even if I quit doing podcasting, I I would still keep Working Class Bowhunter as a brand. That would just solely shoot to get people or to get people to no, no pun intended there. I didn't mean to do that, but to get together to shoot their bow and just bring people together and make friends that hunt. And that's really what it's all about at the end of the day. So that's that. I mean, I don't know if you ever see Steve at a bar or at a hunting show, he's talking to every person around him, And it just seems like Steve has that ability to pull people towards our group and we just make friends everywhere we go. So it, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's been an awesome ride. That's pretty cool. I, I don't think you're too far off from having that ability either, by the way, because we're chatting and shooting the breeze, and I think you're a pretty cool guy too. So, you know, don't <laughs> oh, give Steve that. too much credit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, it, he's a different character, man. Yeah. There's nobody else like him. And that's the thing. Like, there, you can't duplicate Steve, and I don't know why you'd want to, but he, he's such a good man. He, he He's a good guy. He's a riot. That's so if even awesome. if you don't hunt, you can probably listen to our podcast and just laugh at Steve the entire time. But I feel like I'm rambling on about our show too much. So no, man, can, that's great. I mean, you guys, on, you guys have done along. a great job. I, I want to give you guys the credit where, where credit's due. I, like I said, I have a podcast, and I appreciate yours, and my, then I appreciate my own. So you're, you're doing something right. Appreciate that, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, well, let me let me switch gears. Um, you know, when you and I talked about doing this one, I think uh, a topic that has been hitting home for me is just tradition, and, and tradition and hunting specifically. And I bring it up because um, – you know, I'd asked a buddy of mine, a really, a really close friend. Um, hey, do you want to come hunting with our group? You know, I'd love to have you. We, I think we'd be, you'd be a great addition. You know, it's a ton of fun. Blah 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 blah. And he's like, yeah, uh-huh. you know, that sounds great, but you know, I, I don't think I can break away from my group with my dad. And and I'm thinking, well, right. I guess shit. If I had to do the same, that would be tough. I don't think I could do it. So hunting in its roots, it's it's just so 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 traditional. And I look it really forward is, to. Yeah every year and what's funny is i can already feel what it's going to be like to be in the woods the public land that we hunt i can already picture us walking through the woods and and scouting and telling stories for the all the different spots where we've had our kills and and just kind of reminiscing and getting the cabin and all that stuff and it just that is in and of itself one of the most exciting things about hunting is that camaraderie and the tradition that goes into it and creating that tradition so i gotta imagine you guys have some of that too yeah, man. I mean, I think everyone does, even if it's, but there's some people, if you're fortunate to have a hunting camp that you can go to every year, that's, that's it, man. That's the epitome is, you know, you show up to camp, you unpack your gear. If you can stay there, 
you wait for your buddies to come in and unpack. Like that's how I grew up hunting. Um, I learned, I was fortunate to learn to bow hunt from some absolute studs, just bow only, all, the only bow hunt, just kill studs every year. Just that's how I learned. And, um, so I'm very fortunate for that. Not that I kill studs every year, but I just, I feel, I feel like I learned the right way when I was young, but it was, uh, I grew up in a hunting camp where, you know, we take vacation or and getaways and go for a week or two weeks and hunt every day and then come back and everyone would cook huge meals and we'd give each other shit and show trail cam pictures and share trophy photos and all that, you know, and that was back when you remember the wildlife eye and 35 millimeter trail cams like oh yeah that was in oh, yeah back when that it was day like, and even should before I put that. this camera in the woods like what is this thing i have to walk out yeah, there and check it now you got people jones uh-huh. and freaking go check their trail cams like they can't wait <laughs> you develop your 35 millimeter trail cam and there'd be nothing but like blank photos and like the butt of a deer and yeah. then you're like ah, one hour photo down the drain yeah. but uh oh, man. yeah man that's how i grew up hunting and basically what happened is we lost the property we hunted and so that tradition that i've knew from the very first year i hunted until i was probably 20 21 that just flushed out right down the drain pretty much um which is sad to see go but and then it's just always been me and my dad hunting we still had that tradition going sure yep but then now that me steve and eric and we have a group of guys that i like to call the wcb uh ogs like the <laughs> the original gangsters of our of our group is, is I joke around when I say that, uh, but we have like this group that all of us kind of that don't have a hunting camp to go to like that. We kind of make our own and we get together. Um, we have a party, get together, campfire um, before the opening day of bow season, and we celebrate. Somebody shoots a deer, we all get together and talk about it. And uh, last year and the year before, every time someone shot a buck, we'd get together and we'd podcast right after and get everyone together and celebrate. And uh, I don't know, we kind of, you know, Eric has a working class bow owner party every February at the end of the season and everyone gets together for that. And, and we try to get together and do, you know, we stay in contact and hang out and kind of make our own hunting camp wherever we can. So that's cool that you guys do that. So do you just on a, on a flip then, do you guys bring your recording stuff to, to deer camp? It sounds like, um, not typically. Well, deer camp typically is my house. We kind of, um, it sucks for Eric cause it's kind of a far drive, but that's kind of where, how far like, drive is that for him? Eric drives every day to podcast every day we record. He drives 35, 40 minutes to my house. That's not terrible. So that's not, he can listen to a podcast he, on the way. That's right. I'm going to listen to one of ours and get better at what he does. That's what he does. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, we, we just make it happen, man. We, we just try to get together as much as possible. And we're just such a good friends, man. We, if, if you hung out with all of us, me, Eric and Steve and the rest of our gang, you would think me, Eric and Steve hated each other. Cause all we do is rip on each other, but we're joking. That just means you, you love know, each other. That's how it works. It, it's exactly how it works. Like we give Steve the hardest time and Eric will call me an idiot left and right, but we're joking. <laughs> if people understand that friendship, but. Yeah, I'm a big it's fan of the word, stuff that of the goes word on in bitch. I'm like, okay, bitch. <laughs> to, to, or, or you piece of <laughs> right. shit. <laughs> I'm going to have to put the explicit one <laughs> on this episode, but that's how that's how we roll, man. That's the same. Prick. Stuff so like if I'm that. doing a podcast, it's got to have the little red E next to it. That's just kind of what happens. Exactly. Totally cool with that. You can't trust anybody <laughs> that doesn't swear. You know what I'm saying? I, hey, I fucking hear you. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's freaking great. <laughs> Sorry to cuss on your podcast. I'm just used to I I just had N O D R on my podcast, man, and that was uh F words everywhere. So <laughs> Holy crap. I'm uh It I'm, is what it is. I prefer the swearing rather than not to have it. It's just a little bit more authenticity, it's real, it's just I don't know, it's better. It's better. Right, right. But you get some people but, like whoa, I don't know. Whoa, whoa, never again. I'm like, sorry about that. Sorry. Well, you it's aggressive, but it's like go somewhere else. This isn't the radio. Yeah, that's kind of my outlook. It's like, yeah, you know, if you're a little, if you're too worried about it, I understand, man. Maybe you have kids in your car when you're trying to listen to the podcast, but I don't know. That's you're just who I am. Anyways, I, yeah, kids, you're, you're, if you're a hunter, I mean, come on, it's not like you're not swearing. Yeah, yeah. People listen. I, it, it's just one of those. It's just how we are. It is what it is. Uh, I get it. If you don't want to, I understand both dynamics, but that's. I get it. It's just part of it. <laughs> but and so. What, Oh gosh, I had another question lined up for you, but I think I forgot it. Um, just finished drinking my beer here. 
I was gonna say. Yeah, I'll drink one with you here. Thanks, man. Take a take a pull for me here. <laughs> uh, was there another guy that was on your show, Mark? Is he still Mark around? Right. So, yeah, Mark. Um, what I was gonna say is, we talked about how it's hard for all us to get together. You notice, like a lot of times, we have one guy that started with us and he faded out. And then Mark Rife is, he's uh, from Creative Critters Taxidermy. In my opinion, one of the best taxidermists in the state of Illinois um, for fish, for birds, for uh, shoulder mounts. Um, he, he's on as much as he can. He's working two jobs. He's a taxidermist, and he oh, yeah. has a day job, too, and he has kids. So um, he's there when he can get there. Um, but I can't blame him, man. He's got his life going on. He's always welcome to the show, and when he comes to the show, it's always deep taxidermy information, and it's a lot of stuff people are like, I had no idea there there was that much into it. So I don't he, know, he knows his stuff. That stuff. That's pretty good to know. In fact, it might be even worth taking the drive if I get something worth worth mounting. But I got to – Yeah. Thought, that's what I was going to say. So what uh, – I know some podcasts have, like, the video going on back and forth. I know I don't do that a whole lot. Yeah. I don't think I've done it at all. I, the other podcasts I do, we do do that because – that guy is technical and I'm not. So he's figured all that fun stuff out. But if right. you could see me right now, you would see I'm wearing a catching deers hat. And I got to meet um, Bud at uh, Deer Fest <laughs> on Friday. That guy is uh-huh. funny. Did you guys have him on your show at some point? Yeah, he was on um, a couple weeks ago now. Um, he was on the episode before NODR. And then we had um, another one of their guys from Catching Deers on last november and then we hung out with bud at apa this year and uh yeah that guy's a riot man he's uh he's got to fit right into that crew with you guys he does man um (laughs) he's a riot. he's a good guy i feel like maybe our customs a little much for him but he's uh he's he's a good dude he he absolutely cracks me up those guys are geniuses man the the most famous hunting story ever told or whatever they just released yep, that video. Saw it, the New York that's, thing. That's saw pure it. gold. When I met him, I'm like, "What are you, some sort of marketing savant? You're freaking out of control." He is. It's so good. I'm like, I'm a marketing mm-hmm. guy, so I'm looking at that like dissecting every piece of it. I'm going, "Holy freaking crap!" But on the other side, as a fan, I'm going, "I fucking love this." I'm wearing the hat with pride. I'm yeah. wearing more than my own stuff. It's freaking epic. I love I love their brand. I love the way they're doing stuff. And Bud is hilarious. Yeah, it's kind of our style too. Like you know, they take their hunting seriously, but they they don't take themselves they take themselves lightly. He's got a um, kind of a motto. He says I can't remember it word for word. That might have been it. But I keep a kitchen deer's hat on deck in the studio, and uh, those guys are hilarious. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know that uh, Carrie Underwood's his sister in law. Um, what? I don't I know. know. That's that. a that's I a fun know that fact. Holy crap. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't want people to know that, but uh, yeah. that's actually absolutely true. I got a buddy. So you talk about how Steve loves wrestling. One of my close friends, his brother is Austin Aries. So I I couldn't tell you that. <laughs> so bring it up. Let's see if Steve knows Austin Aries, and you know. Okay, I will. I'll make him listen to the podcast, and then that way I don't forget. Perfect, perfect. And then he can send me a fun. message yeah. or something. And when I well, no, he's listened to it when I get a message. <laughs> you know Austin Aries. <laughs> yep. That is funny. It's, that's the thing with our podcast. You know, when we talk about hunting and then Steve will somehow relate hunting to professional wrestling and half the time we move past it and we're talking about whatever we're talking about. It could be, we could be talking about serious like tactics here on getting on a deer and a pinch point from bedding to food. And we're breaking that down in every way we can. And then he'll throw us point in, but somehow relate that to professional wrestling and we'll either move right past it and act like we didn't hear him. If you pay attention to him, he, yeah, he, which, he'll stop. It'll keep going. <laughs> exactly. But I think it's funny for our listeners if we don't acknowledge them and keep moving because, like, either they catch it and then we go right back to what we were talking about. So it's – our podcast is all over the place. I but feel like if, if you guys were talking to Catching Deers, he could have mentioned – and I didn't listen to this episode, but he – not all of it, but I, he could have mentioned – I feel like Pile Driver and Catching Deers go hand in hand. I <laughs> I don't remember if he mentioned it, but it's uh, I, I don't know. That, that was a scary combination getting Bud and Steve on the same podcast, man. You never know what you're going to end up with. Yeah. But uh, so I caught a deer. Yeah, Bud's and a good dude. Drived it and I freaking yeah, dude. Oh my gosh. That's yeah, that's wild. Steve Wood. Uh, that's just a dynamic. I don't know if I want to dive too far into <laughs> Steve's. Steve's crazy mind of his, man. I'm telling you, if you if we're ever if we ever can meet up in person, 
you got to have Steve like on a live podcast and you'll just, you won't even have to say anything. Well, so if you guys end up scooting through, if you guys end up scooting through Wisconsin, um, I had, I don't know if you've ever talked to Sam Eubel or heard of him. He, uh, got to, yeah, he's been on our show. He's a great guy. He, uh, lives like not far from me at all. So I had him on the show and he actually came to my house. That was the first time I ever had done a person to person podcast. And, uh, our house, we have a bar in the basement. It looks like a typical Wisconsin bar where you would order a brandy old fashioned. So if you guys are ever through the yeah. Wisconsin area, you guys need a place to crash. I got plenty of couches and a bar full of beer down there. So just let me know. All right, man. We'll be over in a couple of weeks. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a scary invite, man. We'll pick you up on I'm it. Next dead thing you know, ser- I'm dead serious. Short of it being, uh, I got, a, I got a little girl on the way. So, um, short of it being September 18th, a little before, a little bit after, which is like right around bow season opener too. So we'll, we'll see, but. Hit me up, guys. We're playing something out after bow season. We're normally, February, January, February is when we do all our travel podcasts. Like, we went up to Wisconsin Rapids and did a couple podcasts with Scott Bakken over at HHA. And oh, yeah, yeah. Had I an absolute that. riot. that when I was on yours. Okay, yep. Yep, he's a good dude. And, uh, yeah, we have a lot of fun, man, with our, with our show. And make, basically, you know, going back to the tradition, then we made our own tradition out of things. And um, that's what it's all about. It's not always about killing big deer. Sure, that's fun. And try to do that every year but it's really about like you said earlier it's the camaraderie um and hunting and the bonds and deep friendships it creates you know with, within all of it so Hell yeah and when someone doesn't get a big deer you just get more shit to give them so it's almost better when it works out that way because then next year when deer camp you can really throw them under the bus <laughs> it's exactly it it's exactly it but it's also i feel too hard for people man <laughs> if i know like they're chasing hard i'm like yeah, oh, i'll tough. give them a little shit but i'm not gonna push the button too far yeah. but I'm that guy. If, if my buddy shoots a deer, I'm over the top excited for him. And, that's that's how um, I am. I just love it, man. I love like, if you're I, my buddy shoots a deer, I'm like, dude, we, we found it yet? Wait up! I want to come. I want to come trail it with you. So cool. And that's cool, my man. tip. My tip of the day is if you can go on a on a blood trail, go on a blood trail because you learn something every time. That's yep. my one serious piece of information you'll grab out of this podcast. And there's me. nothing not fun so, about going on a blood trail. It's the most unboring thing you could do. So. Usually, yeah. if I'm getting bored, I'm not seeing anything. Someone gets something. I'm like, I'll come help. <laughs> I'll come help follow the right. Let's do it. I, I try to go on every one, and then people want to walk right over them. I'm like, no, man, let's go slow. Like, walk and analyze each each step because um, you you can you learn so much, and it's nice to be like, oh, I'm on this blood trail. Oh, I've ran into this situation before. Let's yeah. break it down this way. Dude, we had a situation um, two two or three years ago. Maybe it's three. I don't know. It all blends together now. But um, my dad got he shot at a deer and he thought he hit it. And then, uh, someone else must've got a deer the same in the same area the day previous and mm-hmm. it rained. So the blood looked fresh. So we ended up tracking a deer to someone else's gut pile. That same damn ah, thing happened chances? last year again. I'm like, what? And I think I can't remember. He, my dad did get a couple deer, but it was funny. A little self plug here. Um, he's like, Hey, come help me. Come help me track a deer. You know, I think I got one and you got, you got good eyes. So, and he wanted to like meet me back by the truck or something. I'm like, what? Or maybe he wanted me to try to find me. He's trying to explain where he was. I'm like, what? Just open the where to hunt app. I'll just come find uh-huh. you. He opened it up. I watched my dot move to his moving dot. And then I looked up and there he was. It was freaking perfect. Saved a bunch of time. That's awesome. Super it's, cool. It was pretty neat. That was actually one of the weirder things. Technology is amazing. Yeah. It was kind of cool, but well, cool. So yeah, one more man, time, awesome. where do people, where do people find you guys at? Uh, workingclassbowhunter.com, Working Class Bow Hunter on Facebook, at Working Class Bow Hunter on Instagram, and uh, those are pretty much the three important ones. Okay. iTunes, of course, you can listen there, yeah. everywhere else. Perfect. Well, I think that's a show. Thanks for having me, man. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Looking for a spot to hunt? Download the free Where to Hunt app for your smartphone today. Avoid hunters, see less people, see more deer. With the Where to Hunt app, you will know where other hunters are before you see them. Just search Where to Hunt from the App Store to download today. All right, so I haven't done one of these in a while, but uh, I like the sound of this music, so we're going to do the tip of the week. Let's just sound fun. So the tip of the week, two of them. Real basic, really simple. Early season bow is right around the corner. The bow opener is around the corner here in Wisconsin. 
um, September 16th, I believe, and if I have my countdown app, let me just grab that on my smartphone here, and I'll tell you exactly how many days away it is from the 9th. Um, it's exactly 37 days away. 9 hours, 53 minutes, and 10 seconds. September 16th, 2017. Um, tip of the week, then, is uh, I had one November gun hunting. I think it was three-ish, four years ago. I can't remember. It all blurs together. But um, it was that one November on opening day when it was piping hot outside, like sweaty hot. It was very abnormal. I think the year after that, it was freezing cold, but whatever. Um, my buddy got a deer and, uh, we were helping him gut it. It was actually his first deer that he ever gotten, which is really exciting. And it was so hot that there were flies everywhere. It was disgusting. So not only am I sweating, uh, you know, it's hot out, it's uncomfortable. You're, you're, you know, it's meat's hot. Um, and then suddenly flies start showing up. So that's not a good thing, a good sign, not something anyone wants to deal with. And so I just, you know, uh, read and found this tip that, so you have to carry this with you ahead of time, uh, be proactive about it. But apparently, and if you've heard of this, let me know, you know, write into where to hunt on, you know, whatever Facebook, any of the social channels, um, Instagram, I don't care whichever one you choose email, uh, but black pepper sprinkled in the body cavity of a deer will ward off flies, yellow jackets and other insects while the meat hangs in camp. So I don't know how true that is. Um, I don't know if that's something you want to do while you're gutting it and then get it in there right away before you hang it up and, or drag it out and hang it up and all that stuff. But throwing that out there as a tip, not sure if it's 100% true. And then one other one that I, um, I keep forgetting to try it. I always want to try it. I always see it. And some, someone always mentions it and I, I never remember to do it. <laughs> but if you, if you take a half eaten pack eating pack like you don't have to eat anything dumb about it doesn't really matter but if you get tic tacs and you have a you know um, a tic tac canister that's half full and you put you know maybe one or two in, in each pocket um if you're if you're moving too fast in the woods if you're really trying to do like some spot and stock or something like that or still hunting um you know that's a good indicator that you're moving too fast so if you can keep those tic tacs quiet in that little container that might be a great way to know like okay i gotta slow i gotta slow down um, I think that'd be a great thing for me personally. I'm, I can be impatient. I like to move quick. Um, I know other people, maybe they're a little bit more methodical and they really do move slow through the woods. It just really kind of depends. But those are the tips for this week. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you enjoyed the guests that we brought on from the working class bow hunter group. Um, that's all I have for you, for you all today. I will say if you haven't downloaded the where to hunt app, uh, to make sure and go ahead and do that. My shameless plug, I think that's three in this episode, but it's it's coming up soon and the app is functioning and working really well. We got a lot of, a lot of usership or a lot of users on there now. And the more people that use it, the better it becomes. So appreciate anybody that's using the app. If you have any feedback for me, let me know. Thanks so much. Have a great day in uh, Hunt Public.